What's going on guys, my name is Suboptimal and today I want to showcase a video editing app that I made which helps me detect and remove silence from my videos. We'll first take a look at why I built this app and then I'll give you a demo of the app with a sample video and finally we'll dive into the tech stack. Cool, let's get started. So why did I exactly make this video editing app? Well, when I first started making YouTube videos, I was making them around once a week. And in late 2020, I basically quit my tech job to do this full time. So now I've been making two to three videos per week. And what I realized in the process was that I really like the idea of learning new technologies and teaching them to you guys. But what I really hate is the editing process. For reference, when you see a 10 minute video from me, that's something that's probably taken me one to two hours to edit and even longer to film. So I just wanted to see if it was possible to sort of reduce the amount of time that I would spend inside of the editor. And on the side, I was like, okay, well, if I built this and other people, other creators have this same issue, then maybe I can sell it as well and make a profit. I set aside about two weeks in June to you know, learn and see if it's even possible to make this app. And this is the end result of that two week period. Right now I can select an MP3 or MP4 file and I'm just going to select a sample file inside of my project. This is, you know, Steve Jobs at a Stanford graduation. And you're going to notice here that as soon as I import the file, the app is automatically able to detect some of these silences inside of the audio section. So if I were to play it, you'll notice that it's going to skip through these silent regions. Now, let's say I wanted to actually edit these silent regions, maybe customize how the app detects you know which part is silent so i added some customization features here this one is the minimum length of the silence so if i wanted the silence to be longer than a certain length i just have to increase this as i increase it any silence that is less than 0.9 seconds is removed right and if i keep increasing it you know more and more silences are removed there's also this thing called silence sensitivity, which is going to determine how loud the audio has to be for the app to consider it as silence. So if I make this larger and larger, the app is starting to consider these bigger waveforms to be silent. So if I made this all the way up to one, then the whole thing would basically be considered a silent region but let's just bring it back down to point one so let's just play this and see what it sounds like right now i'm uh, honored to be with you today for your commencement from one of the finest universities in the world truth be told uh, I'm so you'll notice here that there's a pause while steve jobs you know took a break from speaking and i noticed that there's a silent region here that i don't really want because i want to include the applause so i can just remove these two silent regions and of course i can edit these ones over here you know move these around etc etc so there's a little bit of editing that needs to be done but you know you get the idea it basically removes the silence inside the videos and at the end of the day all i really got to do is click this button which is going to export it and i'm just going to call this file the export file and yeah as soon as I press that it's going to start exporting it's going to remove all the silences and you're going to have file uh, without any of the silent regions that I added uh, that's one of the biggest issues that I always had is just like cutting down and trimming down the edits the video edits that I have and so this basically drastically reduces the amount of time I spend editing so instead of spending say like one hour to edit a 10 minute clip now it's down to like 10 minutes and sometimes it actually you know basically reduces my edit time down to like less than a minute because I noticed that all the silent regions that I would have edited out are automatically detected and all I gotta do is press export and then the app does it for me let's just take a quick look at the tech stack. This is a desktop app built using Vue.js. And to style it, I used Tailwind CSS and I used Electron obviously to uh, create the desktop version of it. And the reason I made it a desktop app is because I wanted to sell it to people. So I wanted to package this app and package it for Mac and Windows and Linux and just sell it as like a one-time purchase. To manage this state, I'm using Vuex. 
one example of where Vuex comes into play is when you look at the settings over here. So you're gonna notice that I have a, a couple components here, but two components that are interacting with each other are this settings component and the wave surfer component. So as soon as I start sort of changing these settings, you're gonna notice that this other component is changing the way it looks. So there's like some state being passed around here. And that's what Vuex is really helpful in managing. And the next thing to mention are some libraries that are really useful in uh, helping me make this app. Now, two of the mo the visible ones, I should say, are the uh, Font Awesome icons. So these are just the icons. Uh, Wave Surfer, which is this library that basically connects to a video slash audio inside of your uh, you know app. And what it does is it allows you to, it displays this waveform and you can sort of like click through and it's gonna tie it to this audio piece and things like that. So that was a very awesome library that helps me uh, add these regions and show this timeline. And when I pl hit the play button, it's going to like play along with the video. So that's what Wave Surfer does. Um, I also added hotkeys. So for example, if I press the spacebar button, that's gonna actually play the video. I can skip backward by pressing the left arrow, skip forward by pressing the right arrow, things like that. Final super helpful library was um, FFmpegs. So whenever you're editing videos or audio files or anything like that, um, you wanna use this library called FFmpeg. And that's what this icon represents is the FFmpeg library. Uh, I used the node version of it, which is fluent-ffmpeg, and basically it allows you to uh, pass in certain parameters into uh, node. So basically I can pass in like uh, th these time regions, right? You see like 19 to 21, 10 to 12, five to seven seconds. And uh, once I pass that in and I format it the right way, then FFmpeg is just going to sort of slice up the video and automatically uh, piece together the remaining pieces. So it basically handles all the uh, video editing automation on the back end. Huge props to the uh, FFmpeg team, the Fluent FFmpeg library, which is a node library wrapper on top of FFmpeg, and as well as the Wave Surfer library. Uh, so yeah, without these two technologies, none of this would have been possible. So yeah, that's gonna be it for today. Hopefully you guys learned or saw how I'm able to edit videos really quickly. Hopefully that will mean that I can spend less time editing, more time learning, and more time teaching on YouTube. Now I'm not exactly sure if I'm going to make a product out of this and sell it or anything like that. It's something that I found useful and I just thought it was pretty cool that I was able to build it and save a lot of time when I'm editing my own videos. Hit the like button if you enjoyed the video and consider subscribing for more suboptimal content just like this. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys next time.